Hello everyone. I hope you're doing well today. Uh, I am Lisa Kester with Wild Acorns Pottery and today is March 19th. It is the first day of spring. So I thought I'd make some flower vases. Um, and I don't, you know, I didn't feel like making, I, well, I made a couple, you know, little flower vases on the wheel, but I don't know. Everybody, it seems like there's a lot of them on the wheel and <clears throat> I wanted them to be a little bit more um, creative, I guess, you know, a little more, have a little more character. So I looked around for inspiration and um, there were quite a few on Pinterest and all sorts of different places. So I kind of looked at all of them and kind of came up with my own little pattern. And um, well, you know, flower vases, there's not a lot of, you know, you can't change them up a whole lot. I feel like I feel like there's clay on my glasses. <laughs> Hang on a second. I'm going to show you the pattern. Ah, there we go. So I thought I would, you know, just do something a little different today. I do have bowls to glaze, some doodle bowls. So maybe I'll do those. Uh, well, maybe I'll do those later. Maybe, to, well, maybe tomorrow. We'll see if I have time or not. I have class tomorrow. But um, anyway, so this is what I want to make. Let's see if I can get back a little bit. So, this is such a fun, easy, kind of starts out with a round base. But if you notice, I make it an oval at the top. And um, one of, um, if you've seen the Potter, um, I think, is it Texture Queen? I'm trying to think what her name is. I think it's Pottery Texture Queen. She, Queen. She makes some similar to this. And um, so I try to change them up a little bit, but, um, but anyway, so that's, that's what I want to make today. Like I said, it's the first day of spring, although we had snow flurries yesterday, <laughs> which I think it's been kind of a weird, you know, I think the weather's been weird all across the country, you know, it seems like everybody's, uh, um, I don't know. It's cold when it's supposed to be warm and then it's warm when it's supposed to be cold and Sunday I was out um, working in the garden and I had shorts on and Monday it snowed so <laughs> and then I had all my plants out because I'm I I love to garden I love to be outside and um, um, so I you know I bought pansies which they can handle the weather but I bought ferns and and I had all my house plants outside, so I had to bring all those in. And so the cats have been liking all the plants back in the house. <laughs> so anyway, so if you like these, you want to stick around. They're easy. They're easy to make, and uh, get your clay and your cup of tea, your drink, whatever. Have a little chit chat. <laughs> And let's make some pottery. Let's make some flower vases for for uh, for spring. For spring, right? Um, so I moved. If you notice, I moved my camera on the other side. I'm not sure I like it yet. I I bought another mount for my camera. That canvas lamp. I don't know if you've seen advertisements for that. And um, I like the arm on it because it reaches over if I'm doing painting or something to show, but, um, but the, but the light's not real bright. So I'm going back to my other way. So we'll see how this works out. Let me know what you think, but, um, but yeah, I mean, it's, you know, and I will, I don't know if I'll reverse this or not. It doesn't really matter. We're not looking at words. I didn't reverse the last one and somebody said something, of course. <laughs> so of course we've got, Molly in here. She changed boxes. She was over here. Now she's over there. I don't know. I think Millie's sleeping on a chair in my dining room. So, but it's, it's weird, you know, as soon as I come in here to do pottery, usually they both come in, but Molly always comes in. She's been real attached to me lately, um, which, you know, is fine. So first I want to say, uh, tell you what I'm working on. So this is a piece of concrete board. I'm gonna move it this way a little bit. 
Um, the concrete board is, is nice when you're hand building. And you have to stand something up. I'm going to move this. There we go. And you have to stand something up like this because you can lay your clay down on here and it gets stiff. You just have to be careful you don't lay it on here too long because it'll get too stiff. And then, um, it, you know, it cracks when you go to bend it. So, but concrete board is, um, I'm trying to think, it's called hardy backer board also. You can get it at Home Depot or, you know, your hardware store. It's what they put in showers. So it looks like drywall, but it is not drywall. And it's, it's rough on one side, it's smooth on this, on the other side. And since it's made of concrete, um, we actually use these where I teach to wedge our clay on if it's gooey. We use it to reclaim our clay also. We, you know, if you've got a small studio, even if you have a large studio, but um, it's perfect to, you know, I don't have a large studio, so I put all my reclaim in an old clay bag. When it gets about halfway full, I just, you know, smash it on the ground, you know, throw it up and down, <laughs> and, um, and just get it back into kind of like a square. And I keep doing that until, until I get a pretty good consistency in there. And then I dump it out on here. I, I flatten it out. You know, I flip it. Then I cut it into four sections and then I just wedge up, you know, four balls or whatever, you know, I have. And that way you stay ahead of it and you don't have, um, you know, if you don't have a big pug machine, pug mill, or, um, if you don't want to make a big mess and, you know, have a bunch of buckets where people start out with a really wet bucket and a not so wet bucket and, you know, they keep moving it until it's dried out enough to put in a pug mill. If you want to go through all that mess because you have a small studio, this is the best way to go. Just, um, like I said, go to the your hardware store, get yourself a piece of this, cut it in half. Um, this is probably a fourth of a piece. I mean, they come like four by four by six, something like that. Um, but, but yeah, and just what you can wedge on this. And like I said, if you're going to hand build things that need to be able to stand up, it's really nice to stiffen up your clay. You know, if you don't want to have to leave it out for a long time. So I had an old UPS. I don't know if you can read that, but it's an old, anyway, it's an old, uh, I don't know, cardboard, um, uh, sleeve I guess that something came in but anyway so I cut it into a pattern so what I did was I kind of figured out what size I wanted okay the height and then I just folded it and you know cut the bottom cut the top and then I opened it up and I folded it in like this because I wanted to make sure these overlapped. I want my seams to overlap. And then I trimmed the top because you'll have some hanging down here and I trimmed the bottom. And that's really all there was to it. Um, you, know, you get a lot of those advertisements in the mail for uh, Bed Bath & Beyond sends a lot of cardboard ads and a lot of these political people um, send a lot of stuff. And you can use those to make great uh, templates. I shouldn't say really molds. Templates. So anyway, so that's what I used to make this. And then I cut out a round circle. And that's the bottom. And that's, you know, that's all I did. So, alright, so I'm going to put a texture on the bottom, but I don't want it on the top. So I cut out another piece of paper. And you don't you don't have to match it up, but what I did was I just kind of laid a piece of cardboard over here, drew a pencil, and then cut it out. To And that's going to cover up my top where I don't want my texture to be. So I'm going to line this up here. And then someone named Jan... A friend of mine up in Canada sent me this cool texture. I think it's just um, like a placemat. But is that nice? I guess.
guess you could, um, she said they're kind of hard to find. She, like I said, she lives up in Canada. Thanks, Jan. But I've been dying to use this, but it has cool flowers in here. And look at these flowers and then these leaves. So I've been trying to think about what I want to use this for. Um, now you can use it for, you know, anything. But so I am going to, let me lower you down just a little bit there. There we go. I'm going to use it for here, my texture on here. Like I said, I got the top half covered up. And then I'm going to lay this down where I want it to be. Kind of think about, I guess, where you want your, what flowers you want uh, stamped in here. Okay. So now, if this clay was uh, sticky at all, I would cover it with cornstarch first. But this clay has been laying out here on this concrete board, and it's getting kind of stiff. So I'm not going to add the cornstarch. But if your clay is damp and it's sticky at all, the cornstarch prevents, obviously, from your template. It prevents it from sticking to your clay. But it also makes your template leave a deeper impression. Because this is not sticking to your clay, when you pull it off, it's not going to pull the indentation back out. So that's why the cornstarch helps a lot. So <clears throat> I am just going to take one of these rollers here. This, I use, this, this is one of the best little rollers for putting texture and rolling over it. So I am just going to roll this on here. I hope everyone is doing well and getting ready for spring. Some of you are probably getting ready for winter. It's amazing to me, you know, how people from all over the world watch, you know, not just my videos, but, you know, everyone's videos. It's, you know, it makes our world so much smaller. Um, <clears throat> my gosh, how much more enriched we are than our ancestors were who, you know, unless they had the money to travel, they could never see everything that's going on. And gosh, you know, all the art you can see and just everything, just amazing. Okay, so this is pretty smooth. So I've got a pretty, I know I've got a really good indentation on here. Okay, <clears throat> so I'm going to gently pull this off. And look at that. That's a beautiful indentation. Pull that off. And so now, <clears throat> let's see. Here we go. I'm going to use my serrated scraper here. I'm going to score this side and then I'm going to score the opposite side. I'll wet those when I'm <clears throat> I'll wet those when I'm done putting texture up here. I'm kind of jumping ahead of myself. I'm going to score the bottom and then I've got a whole stack of round bottoms over here. So I think I'm going to <clears throat> go ahead and score around the outside here. My clay is still pretty damp, so I'm not going to slip and score. But what I do is I just dip this in my water bucket over here. And that gets the clay wet. And when I, as I score, it's creating its own slip. Okay. <clears throat> so let's see. Um, I'm going to put 
some little lines here. And you can really do, you know, whatever you want. I'll probably make each, each one a little different. And then I'll see which one sells the best. I found out last week that one of the art shows that I was trying to get in had an opening become available. And so I am now in the Cincinnati's Clay Alliance um, Spring Art Festival. It's up on Madison Road in Cincinnati. It is May 6th, I think. It is the <clears throat> first Saturday in May, which, <clears throat> oh, sorry, which is Derby Day, if you live in Kentucky. Of course, everybody watches Kentucky Derby. Well, not everyone, but a lot of people watch the Kentucky Derby. It's a big thing here um, in the region. And I see there's a little cat paw prints here. <laughs> I guess Molly stepped on my thing here, on my clay, when I wasn't looking. So I also made a bunch of clay pieces. I know this looks weird. <laughs> but this is, uh, we did a class on this one time where I showed a bunch of people, who all my students, how to make your own stamps. And I, if, if it's thick at the bottom, I just put little holes in it. That's not actually a texture, but this is a texture. And this is actually what I use for my, my buttons here. And then this one's got little flowers on it, a little flower. So I'm trying to think which one I want to use for this. I've got a whole bunch of them, but I think I'll just use this. And I'm going over... Molly's toe prints. And like I said, if your stuff is sticking at all, just put a little cornstarch on it. The cornstarch starch burns out in the kiln. So don't worry about it leaving a mess or anything. There we go. I love texture on things. And uh, it makes the clays the clays look so pretty. There we go. Okay, I think that's pretty good. All right, now I'm going to add a little bit more water to the bottom here. So it's nice and gooey. I'm going to add some to the sides so they stick together well. And then I'm going to add some to the bottom. Although I don't need much because I have a, a lot on here. This is B-Mix 5 clay. Now, this does not have grog. But um, I really suggest if you're hand building to buy the clay with the grog. When I go back out to Queen City Clay, where I've been getting my clay lately, I am going to get it with the grog. Now, where's my piece of cardboard? Go? Oh, here we go. So I'm just got a piece of cardboard here. I'm going to lay my bottom on here. Whoops, I almost forgot. I'm going to stamp my bottom with my name on it before I forget. You can stamp it afterwards, but it's not quite as easy. Okay, so now I'm going to, of course, now I got that all gooked up. So I'll just turn it over and Lay it over here. What's nice about laying on a piece of cardboard is you can slide your piece around without um, without constantly having to pick it up. So I'm going to slowly bend this in. Actually, I'm going to take this off. I forgot. I forgot to do that last time. So it is easier. It's nice to lay it on there to make sure this is round, but it's really not that important at this point. But you can't get, I can't get my hand back down in the top to really 
press this seam down well because this top is small. So it's easier to do this before you put it on the bottom. You do not want this coming open in the kiln. And my little lines don't line up here, but that's okay. I'm not really worried about it. Okay, now, just gonna take my paintbrush, just kind of smooth that seam down. There we go. And then I can kind of put my paintbrush in here and smooth the seam down on the inside too. So if someone looks down inside there, it looks nice. I have to go to the, the store, go to Hobby Lobby, I guess, and get me some, maybe get some spring tulips or something to put in here to uh, showcase them at the show so people know what they're for. Okay. Make sure you got it on there how you want it, as centered as possible. Okay. All right, so as you can tell, my bottom is bigger than, than the sides. Okay, that's, I did that on purpose because I'm going to turn it upside down and I'm going to smooth these edges down. Okay, I think I'm either allergic to the cats or the clay. Can you be allergic to clay? I don't know. Every time I come here and do pottery, my head starts getting stuffed up. I don't know. I don't see any mold in the clay. One time, I, one of my bags of clay, it was, oh my gosh, it was so black. Not the whole thing, but a lot of it was black. Um, and my head was so stuffed up by the time I got done using it. Ugh. So, okay, so let me, uh, now I've got this big old wooden spoon that I stole from my kitchen. <laughs> and this is kind of wet, so what I'm going to do is just put a little bit of cornstarch on here. See that? So that doesn't stick. And then see how easy this is with this little piece of cardboard? And if it does start to stick, just add a little bit more. I've got, you know, I bought one of those expensive turntables. Nothing probably weighs 20 pounds. And it sits, you know, high like this. And just, I don't know, it, it works for some things, but it's just so heavy to handle. I really don't use it much. A little piece of cardboard works just fine. If it's too high, then I can't see the top of it. There we go. See that? Oh. And I'm actually going to leave um, the little marks in there because I think they're kind of cool. There we go. Alrighty. Now I'm going to. Now you can see the bottom there. I'll turn it back over and so now the bottom just needs to be cleaned up see that so I'm just going to dip my finger in the water and just kind of just kind of smoosh that up against the side 
I want all the edges to be nice and soft. I see so many um, potters who don't do that. And I, you know, I always try to tell that to my students in my class. You know, when you, if you don't trim your pieces well, you don't finish them well. You know, um, an, an edge now, while the clay is wet, doesn't feel so bad. But once it's fired, it becomes razor sharp and it can actually cut your finger. So really take the time to get rid of those rough, sharp edges. And it just looks more finished, too, depending on, you know, what you're doing. I mean, if that's the look you're going for, then that's, you know, that's different. But so now I'm going to take my paintbrush and just, just kind of smooth a little more. It gets a little bit of the water down in there, a little bit of the, the slip that uh, is on the brush. There we go. Well, it's a good thing cat hair um, burns out in the kiln because there's so much cat hair on these things. So now I'm just going to kind of tap it, make it a little bit oval there. There we go. And I'm also going to smooth around the top. It is a beautiful day here today. The sun is out, and so I can't complain. It's not raining or anything. It's not snowing today. It feels like a Sunday to me. I don't know why. But today is Tuesday. Hopefully I won't forget when I wake up in the morning and forget to go to work. That would be bad. <laughs> okay. Alrighty, so the next thing I'm going to do, oh yeah, I was going to put little, I don't know if I need this or not, I'm saying I put little holes here, not holes, but indentations, um, I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to, um, this was an old, gosh, this is, I don't know if you guys um, ever heard of Marjolyn Bastion, she did all these, um, nature drawings that were just just beautiful and this was a pen that was supposed to look like a paintbrush and i just love this thing for pottery <laughs> i use it all the time and there's archie barking again he's looking for his daddy but his daddy's at the grocery store Hopefully he won't bark the whole video. When we go out for dinner or something, he, oh my gosh, he can bark for hours and hours. We've got a camera in our house. We can keep an eye on him. And, um, oh my gosh, he, it's, it's so cute. He, it, sometimes he'll actually start howling. I think I've got a, uh, I think I made a video a long time ago of him howling. We actually had the mother and father of him. Ernie was his papa, and then his um, mama was um, a little Yorkie we called Chloe Bear, and she was she was my little buddy, my little girl, my little girl puppy. But she she had heart failure around I guess five years old. Uh, so we were we were devastated. We lost her. 
And that's why we didn't sell Archie. We were going to sell him with one with his sister. But then I got so attached to him, I couldn't let him go. <laughs> oh, I don't know how people breed animals and then get rid of them. Let's see here. All right, let's see. So now I think I'm gonna turn it around and let's put the buttons on the back. So you got the little buttons on here. So th this texture is from this. So I think I'll do the same ones. Um, I think I'll do the same ones for this one. Actually, let me turn this around. I just realized I forgot to finish the trim on here. Sometimes I just like to run this around here and finish that up. And I forgot to do that. Take from my brush and just smooth those edges down. It's easy to forget stuff when you're on a project that has a lot of steps. I thought I was going to whip these out and make a bunch of them, but they're 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 somewhat time consuming. I guess as you you know as I move on, they won't be as bad, but Okay. So <clears throat> I need I think I'm going to do five buttons. Let's look at that one. has got five. Make five little balls. Are any of you guys doing um, pottery shows? Art shows? It's that time of year. I think May is a good month to do art shows because... You've got Mother's Day coming up, but June and July and August, I don't know. They, they're they always kind of slow, I think. I don't know how <clears throat> um, it is for you guys, but generally speaking, it's so hot. <laughs> I, although I'm not complaining, I don't like the cold, so I can't, I can't complain about the heat. I told my husband I wasn't going to complain about the heat this year, but I did a show um, <clears throat> last year, I guess it was June, and it was so hot, you could not even pick up my pottery. It, it, I mean, when you, you know, some people try to pick up my pottery off the table and they burn their fingers. And... You know, that uh, also brings me to another thing I need to, well, that might be good information for you is when I first started making pottery, um, I made a lot of birdhouses and hold on, I gotta, I gotta dip my clay in some water. I always dip my scraps in water. So... When I go back to use them, they're not all dried out. <clears throat> there we go. Otherwise, if you let your scraps sit there, by the time you get back to them, they're so dried out, you can't even use them. Um, so anyway, so when I was uh, first started doing pottery, I made all these clay birdhouses. And um, then I realized um, how hot they got in the sun. I mean, they would literally hard boil the eggs of the birds unless, you know, unless the person using them has got them in the shade. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five. I think I'll do. go. 
yeah, I didn't, you know, I had someone tell me that also, that, you know, don't, it's not a good idea to make clay birdhouses unless you tell people, you know, don't, don't put them in the sun. Now these are a little sticky, so I'm going to add some cornstarch to these. Where's my, oh, here we go. Okay, I'm going to make my impression. Can you see that? This one cracked a little bit, so I'm just going to wet it and smooth it down. Make another one. You don't want them too big. These are probably a little bit, a little bit bigger than what I really want them to be, but that's all right. A little water on there. Put that on there like that. Some, I just kind of twirl them or spin them, and that helps work them into the the spot that I have scored on the vase. So I'm just going to add a little bit of water to the back of here as I score them to create some slip. And there we go. So now I'm going to take my, my spoon slide it down in there and I'm going to use that as a support to really press these buttons on. There we go. That thing is, has multiple uses. It's so nice. You know, there's so many good things in your kitchen you can use as um, molds and uh, textures and Okay, so you now you don't have to put a, a top on here, um, but I, I did just to try to kind of finish it up. So see how I let me set that there. See how I did that. Okay, so what I did for that is I just took an old piece of clay. This one's a little, a little tacky because I, I dipped it in the water. So, but the, the concrete will dry it out. Plus, I think I'm just going to add a touch of cornstarch. Okay, so now I'm going to thin this out because I want, I don't want a thick piece to go over here. I want it to be pretty thin. And because this is the bee mix without the grog, it's going to want to crack on me. I'm going to make it about that wide. And then I know I'll probably need more. So I'm going to join these two pieces together, just kind of score them. Boy, the wind is really howling outside. It's pretty out, but it's very windy. We were going to try and burn some of our twigs today out in the... We have three huge oak trees, and every time it, we get a little bit of wind or 
storms. We've got twigs all over the yard. But it's too windy to burn anything, so. And this doesn't have to be perfect either because you know this is a, this is a whimsical thing here and I'm dipping that in water I'm gonna lay it over here and the water washes off the cornstarch too which is nice <clears throat> make it a little bit thinner and I'm sure I have extra here now and I am just gonna add a little bit of water this kind of helps you don't want to add a lot, but it does help it from cracking as you're bending it and laying it over there. Okay, now <clears throat> let's see here. I'm going to score just the top of it. I'm not going to score the sides. And now I'm going to lay this on here. And I'm going to bend it, okay, as I go around. This is this can be kind of tricky, but I'm going to I'm going to reround this to put this on. I think that'll help. And that wants to tear a little bit. Let me, let me put a little bit more water on there. You got to be careful when you're dealing with um, clay with no grog in it because the bee mix is like a porcelain mix. And adding water kind of wants to just fall apart. Punch the crack up. See the crack there? But we can fix that, so don't worry about that. Just, you're bending this. As you lay it down, you're bending it. And then, when I get to the end here, I'm just going to cut this off. I'm going to dip it in water and set it aside. And then see how that looks? So I got some little cracks in there, but that's not a big deal. So I'm just going to take my finger now and just kind of squeeze this together so it's on here nice and good. Hopefully these will sell really well. I won't have a whole lot, but because I want to make some little bird baths too. I'm trying to think of how I want to do the bird baths. Um, you got to kind of be, well, the bird baths that I sell, um, they hang from a tree. So the chance of them being in the sun are pretty slim unless the tree doesn't have any leaves. <laughs> but the water can get really hot also in a bird bath. So you put seed in it if, um, if it was on your um, underneath an overhang, you could put seed in it. I have a, lot, a lot of people do that too. They just put the seed in it. But... Okay, I'm repairing. I'm repairing a little crack here. They used to make a lot of bird baths. Um, I'd put little fish in the bottom and little caterpillars on the side and. Actually, I actually had quite a few people, I shouldn't say quite a few, but a few people who would buy them as um, water dishes for their cats. I did make some water dishes with little goldfish in the bottom um, for my last show, and I've got one for the these, these girls, too. At first, they try to get the little fish out of the bottom, but now I think they 
realize the fish is either dead <laughs> or the fish isn't real or something. Okay. So I'm just going to smooth down the inside a little bit. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I need to tell you guys. You guys are all so nice to me. All your nice comments and it really, you know, it really helps. Um, I just, you know, it's nice to read them. Because sometimes, you know, I don't know, you, you know, you make the videos and then you wonder if anybody really likes them or not. <laughs> You know how we are. We always doubting ourselves. It's easy to do. So I'm gonna smooth out like a little crack here. And I don't, like I said, you know, this bee mix without the grog is not my favorite clay. I will n I will uh, not be buying it ever again. It's good for throwing, you know, if you're gonna throw bowls or because it's nice and smooth. But you know, if you're gonna hand build, it, it doesn't like to be manipulated a lot. There we go. I hope you guys like this video. It's been a long time since I've just sat and made handmade pottery or hand built pottery. This is my favorite thing to do. I I am a hand builder at heart. I love to throw on the wheel. It's very relaxing for me. I could sit there and just throw and throw, you know. But um, I don't know. I, I don't get the satisfaction when it's complete i do like i do um you know do the doodle bowls and then that's kind of fun because then they have some character but just a plain bowl um i don't know it doesn't have a lot of character for me it's not you know it's not unique you know you go to an art show or a craft show and you see a bunch of potters and Oh, I don't know. Everybody's got a bowl dipped in a bucket of glaze, and some of them are really, some of them are really pretty. I mean, I, I, I'm not trying to put them down or anything. There's some gorgeous, gorgeous combos that people come up with, but for me, um, I don't know. I like to, I like a little more character, I guess. I love the texture, I guess, and the uniqueness and kind of the whimsical nature of it. <clears throat> okay, so now let's uh, make some handles. So I just start out with a little clay worm. And I probably need another one. Let's see. So I'm going to dip it in water. Hopefully it won't fall apart. Try to keep it from cracking as I twirl it. So I'm just going to pretend you're going around an invisible pencil or you're just coiling it up. that it just this is how I make the little tendrils um, on my pumpkins too and then I'm just going to snip it off and just kind of play with it until you get what you want and so that's going to be my handle so I'm going to 
take my serrated rib again. I dipped it in water. I think I'm going to put it, yeah, I think I'll put it right here. I'm going to score it a little bit. Put a score to get a little bit of water on there, create some slip. And these are sticky, so I'm not going to put any on here. And then I'm going to press them on here very carefully. There we go. I'm going to take my paintbrush. I'm just going to smooth smooth it down, add a little bit of water that will seep down in there, kind of soften up both clays where it's attached, and then just kind of smooth the, all the edges and my fingerprints out, and let's do another one. There you go. So let's make one for the other side. So I need to get some more clay over here. So let's roll this out. And I don't know if you guys know this, but if you're ever having a hard time roll like this and getting it round, once you've got it kind of like that, take it and twist it. Just kind of twist it a little bit. And don't ask me why, but this really helps when you go to roll it, it rolls it round and it doesn't become a square. You know how that is when you it goes clunk, clunk, clunk. <laughs> It doesn't do that when you twist it like that. It's a little bit of magic. So I got uh, more than I need. But I am going to dip it in water because normally I'm working, I'm working on birch wood. But I really don't like to work, um, unless I'm trying to dry something out, I really don't, don't like to work strictly on the concrete because it really sucks the moisture out of it. And so when I'm making these coils, I really don't want these to dry out. So I'm going to wet that a little bit. There we go. Okay, so now I'm going to take this again, and I'm just going to, like a snake, just twirl it up like that. I'm going to cut that off, and cut that end off. I think this one's a little bit bigger than the other one, so I'm going to twist it a little bit tighter. There we go. I want four loops, so I'm going to cut off a little more. I've got four loops on each side. And I'm going to put a little bit of water on this. Keep it from cracking, and then I'm going to turn this around, and with my serrated rib, put some little scratch marks on this side, and a little bit of water. And then just carefully press, press these on. You don't want to smash them all the way, but um, you want them to be well attached. 
Now this clay is, I believe it's cone four to six. So I don't fire all the way to a cone six. So it may not be 100% vitrified. That's one thing that a lot of people are complaining about because these clay companies, they put cone four to six. So a lot of potters think if they fire this pottery, this clay to cone four, it's 100% vitrified, which means it's waterproof. Um, but that's, that's not really the case. Uh, normally, it's you'd have to go all the way to cone six to make it 100% vitrified. And then in some cases, it still may not be. It just, it's, it's, it's kind of a crapshoot, really. I mean, but um, so I'm going to sell these with straw, or not straw, but silk flowers in them. Um, I will probably do a test to see if they're waterproof. Because <clears throat> um, my mugs, my mugs were, so, but there we go. So we are done with another one. But like I said, really look at a box of clay when you buy it. If it says cone five, six, normally you got to go to cone six to make it vitrified. Or if it's four to six, then you got to go to six. You got to go to the top number in, in most cases, not all, but um, you just, you know, test it yourself and see. Let's sit some water in it overnight with a towel underneath. And now some people put a um, lemon or something. I, I guess to see if it eats through the, the glaze or whatever. Honestly, I don't worry about that. I, I guess you should, but I don't. All right. So there we go. I got two done and I got one, two, three, four more to go. But see how easy that is when you put it on a little piece of cardboard? You don't have to constantly be picking it up. So I will I will show these when I glaze them. Let me um I'm going to smooth the bottom down. I've got a little bit of uh, newspaper stuck on here, but that'll all burn off, so don't worry about that. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you do like my videos and you don't mind my chatting, <laughs> um, please hit uh, like and share and subscribe. It helps me, it helps me to gain new followers. And that helps with the algorithms and people seeing them and you know, it's all about that kind of, kind of stuff. Oh, and I got some clay left. I have a little bonus thing. Hang on. Don't leave me yet. Oh, I got to remember to trim this. See, I always, you always think you're done, but you're not. In class last week on Friday, um, I did a project where I made a pattern for a big watering can. And um, a couple of the ladies wanted to make those. And it and it's, it's like this. It's a lot of steps, but on a big scale um and the watering cans turned out beautiful i'll let you i'll show you mine uh, when i fire it and glaze it but um it just you know there's just so many steps i kept saying is it there's another step there's another step there's another step <laughs> i'm like yeah there's another step <laughs> it took us three hours well i shouldn't say three it took us two and a half hours to make it and you know so, so there you go. So there's that one. Kind of oval. In fact, I'm going to fix the, when I stand up, I'll be able to see it better. I'm not worried about it now. It's still pretty, still pretty soft, but I think this is going to be the front with the buttons. What do you think? That's kind of more plain on that side. And there's the handles. And then there you go. So I've been wanting to make these 
this mold. So let me, I'm going to set this down. I'll set this one over here. And I'll leave that one there. And I'm going to show you. So I bought these bunnies. Bought these little bunnies today at Kohl's. I think they're like three bucks. So I thought I'd try to make a mold out of them. So let me show you how I do that. Get some of this stuff out of the way. I was hoping I had enough clay left. Although, now that I think about it, I'm going to need clay for the four others I'm making. But I've got more clay in my bag, so I'm fine. So I've made um, acorn molds this way, and you can really take, um, I've done it with frogs. You can take old jewelry, um, like that are of frogs or snails or little birds. I did one with a bird. Um, that's an acorn. And you can just make your own molds. If you're going to make a lot of birds or a lot of acorns or, you know, you want a lot of little little cute snails or frogs to put on, um, you know, little bird baths or, um, you know, the side of a mug or something like that. You want to make a lot of them. It really helps to use a mold so they're all the same. Let's see here. Oh, here we go. These things are really nice. I don't know if you've got one of these, but I bought this from Bill Van Gilder. Just go to BillVanGilder.com. These... You see the wire on there? These are great for going around the edge of a plate when you're trying to cut off the clay. But see how they just... So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this... I don't think I need it quite this much. Let's see. I'm going to make it as, as big as the bunny. So maybe I do need it. So I'm going to stand his ears are still taller. I'm not sure how I'm going to get in between his ears. I'll probably have to, um, I'll probably have to adjust that a little bit once I get him out of the mold. But let's see, he's still too short. I mean, the clay is still a little short. Okay, that should do it, I think. Actually, I think I'm going to add a little bit. He's tall. He's taller than I thought. So, well, let me add a little bit of this on the top here just to make sure I. Well, my husband's home, so Archie's all happy now. Okay. Now let's try this. So we get it in a nice square. Okay, you want to make sure it's as, gosh, as tall as your pieces. Hopefully I got enough clay here. And as wide. So I'm going to do it this way. I think it'll be okay. If it's not... I thought I had plenty of clay, and then she still thinks tall. It's probably, I probably could take some of the width away. I know you're thinking, what the heck is she doing? That should be good. Okay, so I'm going to take, I'm going to take my clay. I'm going to cut it in half. I'm going to cut it right down the center. Okay. Now I'm going to lay this bunny in here like this. Hopefully I don't break his ear off. 
you do, just stick it in there. Like I said, I don't know how I'm going to do the other ear, but once I take it out of the mold, I'll have to... An acorn's much easier, I'll tell you that. Or something small, like a frog or something. This is rather large. Sometimes it helps to put a little bit of cornstarch on here. I should have done it to the other side, probably. There we go. Okay, so I'm going to put that back in there. And make sure you press your face, your face in there. Oh, man. Yeah, I can't, can't really, can't really get in there to press that ear down. I don't want to break that ear off. Here we go. Hope you can see what I'm doing. I'm just trying to press him, half of him, in half of the mold. Okay, so now I'm going to press the other half down and try to line it up. See how I'm lining it up in there? I probably could have used more clay, but you get the idea. If it doesn't work, I'll just make another one, right? And you can use this when it's just dries. You don't you don't have to biscuit, but of course if you biscuit, um, it'll last a lot longer. <clears throat> okay. Okay, so see it now? is completely encased in there. And now, I'm gonna slowly pull that apart. And normally, I'd let this dry a little more, but because I'm doing a video, I'm gonna try to pull it apart now. Okay, so I'm going to take that out, my little bunny, okay, so now, as you can see, I got two halves of the bunny. So now how I would do this, once this is dry, and like I said, I don't, I will probably go ahead and bisque this, um, but I may try it before I bisque it. Once it's completely dry, I can put clay in here and the clay won't stick because this is dry and the clay I put in is wet, so it will not stick. So what I'll do is wedge the clay in this side and wedge the clay in this side. And then I can let them dry like that and put them together later. Or what I also have done is you put them together, then you smash it together like this, okay? And you just let the clay sit in there for like overnight. It depends, if you biscuit, it actually, you could probably get it out within 30 minutes. And then when you just take it apart, you have a bunny inside, pop it out, and then you just trim, you know, whatever clay gets stuck around the side. Does that make sense? I don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so, and you may have to add, you know, a few more details, but hopefully the bunny will look somewhat like that, but that's how you make a mold. And like I said, you can use, um, 
I've made little frogs, like I said, and um, all sorts of things. And so this should this should all fit together. So I'll let that dry. Probably put it face down so the cats don't step on it. But anyway, so I hope you enjoyed the video. Um, I think these turned out really cute. I'm trying to get the reflection from the light side of my glasses. <laughs> um, I hope you enjoyed it. I thought they turned out really cute. And uh, I'll let you know um, how they sell. I think I'm just going to put a like a light blue on them maybe just something just something simple I don't make, want to make them too busy because when you're putting flowers in here with all the different colors you don't want to take away from the colors of your flowers so anyway thanks for watching um and I will see you in the next video <laughs> thanks